Father God, thank you so much for um, this day. Thank you, God, for everything you've given me. Father God, thank you for our shelter, our clothing, our food. Um, thank you for what you did for us on a cross, Lord God, by by coming, you know, in the form of a man and dying on the cross for man's sins. God, thank you for that, Lord. I don't know who's going to see this or hear this, Father, but you do. And I just pray that your Holy Spirit ministers to them, comforts them, gives them wisdom, gives them advice, gives them guidance, Father. Um, I pray that simply you would use me, Lord, as a tool in your, your mighty hands to, to just be a reflector of your light, Father God. I'm no better than anybody. At the end of the day, I'm a broken sinner who's seeking you. And I believe, and according to your, to your word, that's basically the condition of mankind. We're all broken sinners. Um, and some of us choose to seek you, and some of us choose to stay in the dark, Lord. Um, but I pray for any viewer watching this, believer or not, I pray, pray that, you know, for the people who believe that you strengthen and encourage them, like I said, and comfort them. And for the, the non-believer, Father God, I pray that you would use this video or this stream just to to poke at somebody's heartstrings or pull on their heartstrings and begin to open their eyes spiritually um, and open their ears spiritually, God, to the truth, Father. You know, I believe you, you, you are who you say you are. In the Bible, it said, Jesus, you said you are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through you, Father. And I believe there is a truth, Father. So I pray that you would re reveal yourself to, to both believers and non-believers, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. First things first, guys. Um, I have a Bible here. So I'm going to be reading out of the... I'm going to go old school, guys. That's probably not a good idea, but I'm just feeling it. So we're going to do it. I have a old King James. Dude, that's tight. But uh, let's read like this little opening. So we're in the Gospel of John. I'm going to read this. So the gospel of John is different from the synoptic gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in that over 90% of its material is unique. John's gospel does not focus on the miracles, parables, and public speeches that are so prominent in the other accounts. Instead, the gospel of John emphasizes the identity of Jesus as the Son of God and how we as believers should respond to his teachings. All right, so John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and, dark, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came from, for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. All right, so that was, uh, again, that was John 1, and I just read 1 through 14. A close reading of the Gospel of John suggests that the author was an apostle, one of the twelve, um, and still more specifically, John, the son of Zebedee. So my Bible study leader pointed out that John was an intelligent man, and he was writing the Gospel of John to appeal to both Jews and to uh, the Greeks or the Gentiles at this time, okay? So the way the wording is, when you start to dig deep into John, you see like how he's using a word that would appeal and like make sense to both different, you know, very different, I guess, communities, if you will, or traditions, the Jews and the Greeks. Remember, the Jews 
you know, have the Torah and they've been studying the word of God up to this point for, I guess, I don't know, thousands of years. This is in the Jews history. They have the Torah, which is the five, the first five books of the Bible we have now. Right. And that was like their law and their rules. And they, they, you know, obviously the Jews took that very seriously. Then the Greeks, as we know through basic history, are like known for being like very advanced and, and smart and appreciated education and intelligence, you know, and they, they did a lot of great things. And so John's appealing to both these two audiences. So that's like, that's cool to know as you're kind of reading it to see like maybe why he chose the words he chose. Um, but let's go back to the beginning because this like basically opens up this whole can of worms like in a few sentences about Jesus and what he's a, who he is, you know. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. This is all referring to Jesus. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. God had a plan since before the foundation of the world and it was going to come through his son Jesus. And Jesus was was with God. You know, Christians, the, the key thing about us Christians Remember, the Bible says that we are a p peculiar people, but the main thing about Christians is they believe that God is three in one, you know, that he's the, the father. God is how most people view what God is, this omnipotent, all-powerful being that created everything, right? There's that. That's the father. And then there's the son, which we believe that Jesus Christ was 100% human and 100% God. Okay. And that right away becomes a stumbling block for a lot of people. And I get it. You know, it's, uh, I don't want to say it's confusing. Maybe at first it is, or if you don't know anything about it, it is, I guess it, that could be confusing. But me, I mean, I've so seeked God and studied the Bible and, and have friends who are Christians. And we talk about this stuff all the time. I, I can assure you as I've like learned more and followed God more, I, I see it more and more clearly. And maybe I can't explain it like in a nutshell or in one little Bible study stream on the internet, you know, but I can assure you that as you seek him, that starts to make more sense. But in the Bible, it says that Mary was a virgin and she conceived of the Holy Spirit, right? So his mom's earthly biological and God miraculously um, put the, the seed of Jesus in her without her having to have physical sexual intercourse, you know? So if you th think of it that way, it's like, I mean, the miracle part. Okay. Get, I get, I get it. Some people are like, I just will never believe that a virgin gave birth. I get that, but that's just what it is. It's a miracle and God chose her. So his mother is a biological woman and his father is God. Okay. He has the attributes of God. Now this was God's way of, Remember, God requires so much of us, rules, if you will, or the Ten Commandments, or a moral law. Um, let's just cover the basics. Lying's wrong. Murder's wrong. Stealing's wrong. Um, committing adultery's wrong. We, we all know that. Even non-believers like, know that, you know. Um, and the Ten Commandment covers those basic laws. And if you read the Old Testament, there's like actually way more laws in the old testament and remember there's like a lot of laws that pertain to those ancient people and how life was back then <clears throat> you know they don't have society the way we have now right so they had a whole list of rules and regulations on on how they were supposed to behave as jews so god demands of man to follow so many rules if you will and that's another discussion for another day but the more i seek god these rules the world and our sin views it as, oh, God, he's such a bummer. Look at all these rules he puts on people. I can tell you right now, guys, in my experience and my testimony, those rules are, are made so that you could actually be fulfilled and happy and be protected and safe and live a good life. Um, and our own sin and the devil and the world and non-believers have, have tricked us you know, and we trick ourselves into thinking like, oh, I can break God's laws and it's okay. Or 
God's just a big like grump in the sky who doesn't want mankind to have any fun. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. Like there is freedom in his moral law and his rules, you know? Um, and that only came for me through experience of all my horrific sins and mistakes that I've made in my life. But the reason I'm bringing up rules in the law and the 10 commandments is think, think, and even now, but up to that time, the Jews have to obey and follow all these laws because that's what God wants of them. And if you read your Bible, you know, time and time again, the Jews mess up. Um, the Jews sin. The Jews deliberately turn their backs on God and start following like pagan gods, like the ones that God is saying, do not worship. They set up idols. Um, all this stuff connects, guys, the more you start studying it. But like there was uh, an ancient God that they would worship the pagan nations called Baal, B-A-A-L. This is crazy because it connects to the whole stupid Balenciaga scandal that happened like a year ago. But Baal was like a God known for like requiring, requiring child sacrifice. And they would refer to it as um, having your child pass through the fire because they would literally burn kids and babies alive in a sacrifice to, to Baal and Molech and, and these pagan gods. Okay. Um, and, and so the Jews, they're not perfect. They're a nation that struggles with their own sins and desires and wanting to like follow other gods because they don't feel like God's doing what they want for them. Right. And they would turn their back on God. So God's like demanding of the Jews this whole time to upkeep these rules and regulations. Well, finally, Jesus, God comes in the form of man to put limits on himself and to live the way us men here on earth live. There's a scripture that says, you know, God humbled himself to the point that he came down as a man and he humbled himself to the point of death and death on a cross. So think about this for a second. God, the creator of the universe, the one who made all this, the one who made the universe, the earth, humanity, animals, plants, the planets, the sun, the moon, the stars. He humbled himself and lived like us. It was almost like God was like, you know what? I demand so much of mankind and they're not like even able to accomplish it. Accomplish it. I'm going to go and live as a man just like they do. When in a way it's like him coming down and living like a man is like, not something he even ha would have to do, but he did it because he loved us. And that's Jesus. And he came and he lived the life basically that he demands of all men and women in, in people, you know, ultimately he would like it if we were like, perfect and didn't do evil things and turn our backs on him and break the 10 commandments. Ultimately, you know what I mean? What if we were all capable of that? And this is where God's profound love starts to come in because he made us knowing that we weren't going to be able to do that, but he still wanted to like give us life and, and bring us to life and experience what life is. So then Jesus comes and fulfills, you know, this prophecy. Remember the Jews have been like seeking or, or looking for, for the Messiah for a long time and current modern day Jews are still waiting on a Messiah. Like, modern day Jews don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah or the son of God. And they're still waiting for their savior, you know? So Jesus came and lived a perfect life. And then at the end he sacrificed. And because his blood is completely pure, free of sin, the shedding of his blood is what f freed man from death and sin. He overcame death and sin through the life he lived, you know? And, um, that's why believing in him is like, what makes you pure duck beam. Hey, not sure you heard it today, but you're amazing. I'm proud of you. Keep being strong and keep smiling. I don't know the battles you are going through, if any, but you are strong. Nothing can defeat you unless you let it beat you. Don't give up. You will win. Just keep smiling. Thank you, duck beam. I met you briefly in, um, bald man Riz's chat. And I appreciate that encouragement, brother. 
I definitely need it. Um, I am facing a lot of battles, and I think a lot of other people in this world are facing a lot of battles. Um, I see it. You know, I see it in my friends, my family, strangers, acquaintances. I, I see, you know, that we're all in a battle. And as I've gotten older, I believe that we're all in a, in a, in a spiritual battle, you know. And being aware of the battle is better. You know, to be a soldier aware of the war is better than to be a soldier who doesn't know a war is going on, you know. And I'm just here to point to the light, which is Jesus duck duck beam positivity for a fellow believer amen brother so glad that like just to see your message you know encourages me to keep doing what i'm doing it's my way of uh serving god and it's my way of like fighting the darkness in this world you know and that's it you know i just feel like this is a space that god wants me to be open about my faith and and talk about god and, and jesus and the bible and all that um, so wow, dude, we're, we're going off here, ladies and gentlemen, but so that's to connect back to the actual scripture that we're reading this whole thing about Jesus, you know, coming to fulfill prophecy. He lived a perfect life. He shed his blood on the cross. Um, and this is, again, this is a topic for a different day, but as you read the Bible and study the Bible, and we all know this on basic knowledge, there's something sacred about blood, First and foremost, you know, um, we all have blood in us and you have to have blood flowing through your veins to live, right? Um, and uh, if you lose enough blood, you die, right? Well, like I know that unbelievers sometimes have like asked me or told me like the whole thing about like you're washed clean by Jesus's blood like that's weird you know and that doesn't make sense or anything and and i i can understand that you know that does sound like uh, almost scary in a way like what do you mean i'm washed clean by his blood but it's because jesus lived a sinless life like he literally was pure literally like spiritually and even physically i guess and biologically he was a pure person and he's like the only true innocent person you know he's the only true innocent person who's ever lived who didn't sin and something spiritual that i don't think we can fully understand happened when he spilled his blood for mankind and then that leads us to the holy spirit once jesus sacrificed himself the holy spirit became available to all mankind any man woman child can receive the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that was in Jesus, right? So you have God, like I said, the one we all think of kind of in a general sense, this omnipotent God who's in control of everything that is invisible and he lives up in heaven or on the clouds, right? That powerful omnip omnipotent God. Then you have God who comes down in the form of Jesus to live a perfect life, to die for men. And then that death, is the bridge that allows us men to access that same power of God in our lives, in our daily lives, in our daily battles. Like Duck Beam said in the chat, you know, he doesn't know what any, whatever battles I'm going through, but like I just said, I am going through battles in my life, like a lot of them, you know? And I, and just like Duck Beam said, I don't know what battles Duck Beam's going through. I don't know what battles Archmagus is going through. I don't know what battles any potential viewer who's going to see this video on YouTube's going through. But God does. And I'm, I'm, I can promise you this thing we're experiencing called life is way more spiritual than it is physical. You know, and I used to hear this saying all the time, like, you know, this life is an illusion. And I always used to think, how can that be? Like, there's a, a hard table right here. How is this an illusion? It's, it's physically an object in front of me right here. But like, as, as time has gone on, you know, the Bible says this world is passing away. Like one day this table won't be here. But in my finite mind, my room, the walls of my house, the table, this seems permanent. And like, as if life would go on this way forever. But all this stuff is passing away. And then when it comes to our own bodies, it's almost hard to believe, like, how do you fathom what death is and what it'll be like? Like, all I know is this experience of being alive. 
like when I was younger, I really couldn't even wrap my head around death. When you get 42, though, guys, you start to see it a little clearer. <laughs> and uh, Duck Beam, cute doggy, by the way. I don't know if you were here earlier, dude. I don't know if Doug saved, guys. Please pray for my pug, dude. And I think he's been drinking tonight, dude. Um, Duck, Beam, Duck Beam saying hi to Archmages. And Duck Beam, we all have our own battles we are going through. And with the power of God next to us, nothing can beat us. Amen. And that's the key, guys. I've tried it on my own, you know, and this world gets it twisted and confused and thinks that like, oh, just, you know, you have to be strong enough and you have to be tough enough and you have to make up enough money. And I'm not saying any of those things are wrong. It's good to be strong. It's good to get a good job and make money and provide for yourself and your family. All that in itself isn't bad, but all those things can take the place of God and at the end of the day, we are finite creatures and we do get sick and we do struggle with sin and we are broken. So like we need God to help us. You know, you've probably heard people say about Christianity, oh, well, that's good. If you need, you know, you need God or you need Jesus, that's because you need a crutch. When I was younger, that used to make me so mad when I was a younger Christian and I'd get like defensive and be like, I don't need a crutch. Dude, now that like I'm 42 and all the things I've been through and all the sins I've committed and the, the sins I've struggled with, I'm like, amen, <laughs> I do need a crutch, you know? Spiritually, for sure, I need a crutch because I wasn't capable of doing it. I couldn't do what Jesus did. Um, You know what I mean? I, I I've given in to my own sin. I've given in to the devil. I've given in to non-believers and their plans for my life, you know? And now, like, after all my experiences, I'm like, amen, I need a crutch. I need one every day, every second, every morning, every hour. Because, you know, without God, first of all, without God, I wouldn't have my life. Without God, I wouldn't have experienced the life I've experienced because he loved me and he made me and he wanted me to be who I am. I'm Steve. Welcome to Real Steve TV. Duck Beam, they can take the place of God, but nothing can beat God. Amen. That, and that's the thing, guys. For me, it's a constant reevaluation every day of where I'm at with God. Like it's hour to hour, sometimes minute to minute. Sometimes I'm feeling good and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a good Christian boy today. I'm going to do the right thing and I'm going to love and I'm going to help and I'm going to be positive. And then the next hour, I'm um, bummed out, discouraged, depressed, in a bad mood, you know, and I'm always evaluating through prayer, um, like very conscious prayer where I'm like in my room alone and I read my Bible and I pray for five, 10 minutes. Um, and then prayers throughout the day as I'm just driving in my car or walking through the grocery store or sitting here at my computer, whatever, you know, and I'm praying and asking God for guidance and help. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Duck beam, after 18 years, I've realized God is what I've needed to beat my battles. Amen, brother. And, and one of the guys in my men's Bible study t always says, remember, guys, when, you know, you're scared, discouraged, feeling weak. Ultimately, we know how this story ends. Jesus wins. And we can walk in the power of that on the dark days or the dark times which I'm sorry, I don't care what anybody says, but something has changed ever since. You know, I'm sorry, but the world has been changed dramatically fast in a short period of time. I'm 42 years old and I've never seen the world like this in my 42 years of life. That came out of the blue. None of us were really re prepared for it. You know what I mean? Like when, who's lived through a shutdown? You know, it's like, this is the stuff we saw in the science fiction movies or the apocalypse movies. Like, you know what I mean? And ever since then, it's just been, it's been weird. The last three, four years have been weird to say the least. And I'm so grateful I have God. Cause like, I feel like I have peace, even though things are going kind of wacky. Our politics in this nation are crazy. Um, the prices at the grocery store are insane. Um, 
you know, all of it, like to make a living, to get a good job, to afford a nice place to live or a decent place to live. All that is like under attack and we're living through like really gnarly times. Duck beam COVID brought the devil into full. I amen, brother. I have, I've compared it to the wizard of Oz. It's like, we all knew something was up. Someone's behind the curtain, pulling the strings and then it's like COVID, it was like looking behind the curtain and we're like, oh, what we suspected is true. You know what I mean? And I'm not, I don't believe in all conspiracy theories, but I think there's something to some of these conspiracy theories about global elites, people in power, um, an agenda to take God out of, out of the nation, out of our nation, out of other nations, um, promoting open sinful lifestyles obvious you know obvious what that is you know but all of it and and it's no coincidence that all this stuff is anti-god it's anti-biblical it's anti the ten commandments like god does not want us to do that um and like the bible says what you reap is what you will sow and this nation has been First of all, I'm an American. I love our country. I love America. I love the freedom that we've had for so long. I'm not anti-patriot, none of that. But I think it's like fair to say this country has lost its way somewhere along the line. It's become corrupt. It's become dark. We have become a culture that's obsessed with fame, money, power, prestige, sex, money, you know, all of it. Like those things are all what's important in our culture, you know? And um, I, this, again, this is my small way of serving God, getting online and doing a Bible study on, on Twitch. Like the last place I thought I'd ever be talking about Jesus was on Twitch. You, you know what I mean, you guys? That to me is proof in my own walk of like, this has got to be God's doing because I would have never come up, come up with this. Trust me, I am not that smart, and I am not that brave. Um, but let's touch back on some of these verses. So, um, verse, so we're in John 1, verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And it's referring to Jesus. Okay? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay? And let's jump. That was verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And then let's jump to verse um, 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. So here's the thing. In our sin, and the sin of the world, that's darkness. Jesus comes as a light into the world physically, and then he comes into our lives now, modern day, when you see the Holy Spirit or feel the Holy Spirit. But when you're in your sin and in your darkness, the darkness doesn't comprehend the light. You know what I mean? It is foreign to them. The sin that is in them does not like that. That's all, all our man nature like before you come to realize God's real and Jesus is real and your eyes are opened, you want to hold on to the things that are making you sick. You know, you'll cling to them because they are all you know. And you don't think there's anything wrong with premarital sex, uh, telling a white lie to get out of trouble, stealing a little here or there. Um, being addicted to drugs and alcohol. Like you look around and you're like, well, everyone does it. You know what I mean? Like it's, totally socially acceptable to have premarital sex no one would bat an eye even christians um it's maybe not as accepted but addictions everywhere our culture is all about like drinking like it's everywhere commercials restaurants what, what it's like we're a a culture that's like cool with that you know what i mean and and at the same time we all know how alcoholism can destroy and ruin lives you know and there's all these things going on these are just a few examples but there's all this darkness and evilness in this world in our, our nation you know and again what you reap is what you sow god's like if that's what you want to do as a nation 
If that's what you want to do as an individual, you can do that. But I can promise you what you what you reap is what you sow. You're sowing darkness or you're reaping. Wait, what you reap is what. So you're planting darkness. The only thing you're going to get in return is darkness. <laughs> you cannot plant darkness and expect goodness to come into your life. It's just, it, this is just the metaphor is an agricultural one, right? If you plant corn, you get corn, right? If you plant apple seeds, you get an apple tree. The same goes in the spiritual realm. If you plant good things, you will reap good things. If you plant evil things, you will reap evil things. It's just, it's simple math, if you will. It's simple the way God made life math, you know? And Duckbeam, shout out to Duckbeam. Tomorrow I'm finally getting baptized. Amen, brother. That's awesome, bro. Um, congratulations. And um, that's a special day, dude. Mark that on your calendar and remember it. And remember what Jesus said, you know, about baptism. Like he, speaking of John, because we're in John and it starts to talk about John in these verses. But John said, I come to baptize in the Holy in, in with water. But remember, Jesus says, I come to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So I'm all for public baptism and actually being dunked in water. I think it's like a beautiful, great thing. It's a symbol. But more importantly, is it's an inward cleaning of your heart and soul and mind. It's, it's the Holy Spirit is going to wash you clean now permanently. And like the Bible says, no, nothing can snatch you out of God's hands. Once you believe... It's like a, the gang you cannot get out, out of, ladies and gentlemen. Once you believe and say, Jesus, I believe. I believe in you and with all my heart. I believe you came and lived a perfect life. I believe you came and died for ma mankind. I believe you resurrected. And I believe because of my believing in you, I'm saved. You know, and I will go to heaven in the end. Whatever happens after this physical life, we don't die really. We, we go on. Our spirits go on and they're going to either go on to live in heaven forever or they're going to go on to live in hell forever. And that's it. And hell isn't living. Hell is death. B-Man Riz is raiding a party of one, dude. Well, hey, a party of one's better than a party of zero, my man. And that's all that matters. Um, Yes, dude. It's the Raiders. Well, you guys, you brought guys from the Oakland Raiders? Sick. Okay. Dad joke. <laughs> B-Man Riz, it's just me. Well, like I said, just you is better than zero. And uh, we're just going through the book of John right now. Um, one of my favorite books in the Bible. And I think it's just packed. It's packed with a punch, dude. Um, and I'm sure, some, I don't know. I'm sure you've read it, bald man. We've talked enough that I'm sure you've read John. Um, and probably you too, duck beam. Okay. So let's see, let's jump back to verse six. So we're on uh, John chapter one, verse six. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And again, back to that verse, verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. We were talking about this in my men's Bible study last night. So the obvious thing is... Uh, Big Rig Higgs, dude. First time chatter. And that name's tight. Big Rig Higgs, welcome to Real Steve TV. You caught us on a on a different night. I, I would usually be, what, an hour into the world of Warcraft, but because of circumstances, we're doing a Bible study. And thank you, Big Riggs, for coming in. Uh, you're a well-organized individual. You've got your ducks in a row. <laughs> I'm assuming that's the duck beam, but I'll take it to me, for me too. And then duck beam, I love the NFL reference. Um, and duck beam. Thank you. He's well, I got to go get some stuff done. Thank you, brother so much. Um, God bless you. I hope you have a nice time tomorrow at your baptism. Like I said, mark that in your calendar, brother. And, uh, just my encouragement and, and prayers for you, bro. Um, we're in a spiritual battle in this life, you know, and Jesus is number one. 
and then all other things fall into place. And I'm so glad you did stop by, brother. But um, so back to verse 11, he came unto his own, his own received him not. So obviously that means the Jews, right? Um, he came, he came, Jesus was a Jew, guys, by the way, sorry, newsflash. Um, I hate to disappoint anybody. Jesus was a Jew. He came unto his own, the Jews, and the majority of the Jews turned on him. The religious leaders of the, the time, the political and religious religious leaders of the Jews, the Pharisees and the Sadducees turned on him, did not like him and had him killed. Okay. Mel, got, Mel Gibson got in a bunch of trouble for that. Remember he got into trouble for other things too, that I don't agree with, but it was brave of him to, um, tell the story of Jesus in a modern movie. And he got a lot of flack for that, you know, saying it was anti-Semitic and anti-Jewish and blah, blah, blah. Later on, he got stopped by cops and said some anti-Semitic things that that wasn't cool. <laughs> but I think he did an awesome job with the passion. Um, but not only did the Jews reject him, mankind in general rejected him, right? Because Jews are men. Um, the Jews rejected him and humanity rejected him. And I, I, I don't want to say it's funny. I guess it's funny to me. I'm like, Lord, when I pray or, or think of Jesus, I'm like, Lord, you were like healing the blind, curing the sick. And they're like, kill him. <laughs> and that shows you the depths and the darkness of, of sinners. Think this guy was going around helping everybody free of charge, curing the sick, uh, making the blind see, uh, feeding people with, you know, three loaves of fish performing miracles and then what does sinful men do we should kill him yeah. and that's what they did and then he came back three days later jokes on them uh let's see verse 12 but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name so this is a big one, guys, and I've learned this more recently. So when we accept God and we believe, we become sons of God, okay? Now, not to get this twisted. Some people will twist this and say, oh, we're gods and we're godlike and you know what I mean? No, 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 no. Jesus is the only perfect man, all right? We get adopted in, if you will, because we believe. We become sons of God. Now, on a very universal scale, you'll hear, hear people say, well, we're all sons and daughters of God. Yes, because life or originates from God. So yes, in that sense, we're all sons and daughters of God. God made us all. So I agree with that. But oftentimes people mean that in a way that like, you can't judge anybody in any way um, for the way they live because, you know, they're just created by God. And that's when it starts to lean into not, that's not true. You know, I can't remember who said it, but one of the, one of the new Testament guys said, like, we know you're the sons of the devil because of the things you do. Okay. So don't get it twisted. Some of us, those of us who choose to believe in Jesus and accept what he did, we're sons of God. Everybody who doesn't believe or people who reject God and Jesus, this is going to sound harsh, but they're sons of the devil. They're sons of the enemy. Now that is not me saying go out and be mean to non-believers and be judgmental and, and Bible thump and tell them they're going to hell. And the worst example of that is that awful church that holds the sign saying God hates fags and those, those guys. No, no, no. I'm not saying that at all. Um, we are meant to love and serve believers non-believers either way it doesn't matter um but i also believe we have a responsibility that we can in love in truth in patience if if it comes up in a conversation of of standing up and saying like i'm sorry man but you know i do love you and i have nothing against you but the thing you're doing that is a sin and it might be a sin you struggle with yourself or um and maybe it's not a sin you struggle with, but again, it, it doesn't matter. God, this is what tells us what's right and wrong. And opinions at that point don't matter. 
Um, so I think we have a duty to say what we believe based on what we've learned through his word. And Big Rig Higgs, sin is sadly becoming normalized. And that's, that's the thing. We're getting into this gray area in the world. And I think in Canada, they're talking about like, say, like saying, if you say that being gay is a sin, that's hate speech. And I don't know if that's even true. If it is true, I don't know if that'll even get passed, whatever. But you we're seeing this shift in the world where it's like, are you guys going to start saying what this says is illegal? That's curious. For such an outdated book that's just a bunch of fairy tales, that's weird that you would uh, even can start considering like saying like stuff like that's illegal. But I, to I, I said this recently, Big Rig Higgs. That's funny you say that. I said the exact same thing in a video recently. I can't remember the title of my YouTube video, but I said the exact same thing. I said, what's abnormal sin is becoming normalized. And I used the example of premarital sex and addiction or, or marijuana addiction. It's like no big deal to be like open pothead and smoke a lot. And no one really would bat, bat an eye. And same with premarital sex. You know, that's against God's commandments and rules and what he lays out in the word. But I even know... Christians who wouldn't even bat an eye if like they know that you're dating someone and well at least they're monogamous and it's just them together and they do plan on get getting married in a few months or a year whatever and it's like all that stuff it just don't work guys and we have to a confront it in our own lives whatever we struggle with as men and women whatever it is you know lying lust sex pornography addiction to drugs alcohol whatever what there's so many things that we can be going wrong with in our lives a we have to admit to ourselves it's wrong and then start repenting and asking god to help us and deliver us and start fighting it in any way we can but then at the same time we have the right to stand up to other people and and say what we believe in what the bible's taught us you know and again not in a mean cruel hateful way but in a loving way of like you are my fellow brother in mankind and if you don't like come to god and realize the truth and, and humble yourselves and, and repent you're in grave danger you know your soul is in danger um and i'm doing this out of love too often i think a lot of christians are doing it out of because they want to be right you know, I've seen, and I've been in them myself. I get into a debate or I see other Christians getting into the debate and it has nothing to do with like, you love the person you want to see them get saved and, and you want to help them and you want to serve them and you want to love them. It turns into I'm right and you're wrong. And I think the devil uses that against Christians because we do know the truth, but then it's very easy to border on into arrogance and like, I guess narrow mindedness or pride even, you know, and it becomes not about wanting to help and serve other people and tell them the truth and love. It becomes about wanting to be right and winning a debate. My strategy is like, I bring it up with like, like, let's say someone new I meet, I bring it up that I'm a Christian very quickly and I'm gauging immediately to see their reaction, whether it bugs them whether they're neutral, whether they're like, oh, I'm a believer too. You know, you're going to get like the same, I don't know, roughly the same few responses. Like either they're going to be bugged. They might be mean and hostile, right? They might be mildly irritated and say something hateful. They might be neutral and not care one way or the other. They might be encouraging. You know, you're going to get this like range of things, the way someone reacts. And like based on that is how I gauge how am I going to approach it. And if it gets to the point where it's like leading to knock down, drag out fights, or the person turns to me and says like, Steve, I don't want to hear it. They know where I stand. Do you know what I mean? I tried. And I think Paul or someone in the New Testament said like, as soon as I've witnessed to somebody, I have washed my hands clean of their blood. You know what I mean? I can't force someone to believe. Um, 
I think at least if I brought it up once, maybe another two, three times. <laughs> and of course, being led by the Holy Spirit, you know, because I can't say there's a game plan of exactly how to do it, but being in touch with God in your life and praying about it and, and really observing the person that you're trying to witness to or tell about Jesus is like important, you know, and, and your goal is like love because you love somebody which God calls us to love our neighbor, you know, and that is a big struggle for me, you know, and I've had a, I have a hard time with that. There's some people that like drive me nuts, you know, and I think, oh Lord, like, how am I going to love them? Or I don't have the patience to, but he did that for us. And our lives are just a battle to like seek after his path and try to follow him the best we can. And and fight the sin in our lives and and do something for somebody else more you know i hope as my life goes on my sin and the bad things i do become less often less intense and the good things i do become more often and more intense as i go on this journey you know because like like duck beam said earlier you know he was like i don't know what kind of battle you're in you know but you know, keep doing what you're doing. And that's encouraging because I am in a battle, you know, big rig Higgs, Matthew 13, 15 talks about this. I think let's, uh, let's check it out. I'm right. I'm going to, I'm going to flip over. So let's check. Let's end on this guys. Cause we, I've been going about an hour, so that's good. It's the least I could do for the Lord is like, use my platform, um, to reflect his light and to talk about the truth we're inundated with lies we're in we're inundated with mindless entertainment um the least i can do is like lord i can give you an hour of like my stream and and talk about you father whether nobody comes whether 10 people come you know whatever but let's see what what does matthew 13 15 say all right now big rigs like oh i hope that's what it says now i'm testing big rigs it's the scripture so whatever it is it doesn't matter it's all good uh, matthew 13 15 for this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and i should heal them well, let's go let's go a few verses before that so we're going back up to 11 to get this in more context so jesus he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given okay i see you're right on um uh, big rig it's totally true right because like i said it's very easy for us christians to become arrogant and want to win the debate because of this a verse like this jesus saying well your eyes are opened you see and know the truth now for who for whosoever hath to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance but whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath therefore speak i to them in parables because they seeing see not and hearing they hear not neither do they understand and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their eyes are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Dude, and this, this, you know, Jesus is talking about a spiritual change. How could it be, let's say me, the believer, and here's the non-believer, and we're listening to a parable of Jesus. We both have ears, you know, two normal, normal, two guys with hearing and eyes, right? We're listening to what he's saying. I go away with it saying, wow, God, I, I understand that parable. <clears throat> you know, it means something deeper. 
it's not just about a farmer and his ox. You know, there's a lot of parables in the Bible. And I think most of my viewers probably know what a parable is. You know, it's like, it's a metaphor to explain something deeper. But how is it one guy, the believer can be like, oh, I understand father and another guy be looking. He just heard the same things. He just, just like the people who saw Jesus, the Pharisees were hearing and seeing the same exact thing as the disciples, right? Two very different reactions. The disciples are being like, Lord, please, like, don't, you know, once they started realizing like he was going to die, they were like bummed and they're like, no, Lord, like we barely started understanding and you came to save the world and you're going to bring your kingdom. They, they were bummed that Jesus was going to die. And the Pharisees, on the other hand, they're like, kill him. He's helping too much. Get him. They're like, what did he do? He, he healed my mother of cancer. Get him. But jokes aside, this is a spiritual thing deep in your heart, deep in your mind. There has to be a change in here before you start to see and understand God. You have to realize something is very wrong with you. And the world hates this word, word but it's called sin. I, Dude... <laughs> Look at the world and our problems, my problems, the world's problems. It's mostly because of sin. We do live in a fallen world and there are natural disasters and earthquakes and tornadoes. But look at this world that men have made with the politics, the money, the corruption. Do you know what I mean? People say, "What? why did God, if God's so loving, why is there so much suffering? Because us men choose it. Because men choose, we've made the world this way. You know, the Bible says that the devil is the prince of this secular world. He's the God of, the, of, of this world, of this physical realm here on earth. He's in charge of a lot of stuff. He's a powerful being. I, right after God, it's probably the enemy, the devil, you know? Um, but until you realize deep in this one, something has gone very wrong in my life whatever sins you struggle with whatever black hole is in your heart in your soul in your mind i am telling you jesus came to fix that and i'm not talking about the prosperity gospel see there's these other sick twisted individuals who are christians and they claim that if you give your life to jesus and you give all your ties away and blah 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 you're gonna have a physically prosperous and successful life that may or may not be true okay that whole that whole cr branch of christianity which i don't really consider you know it's called prosperity gospel and so some broken people come thinking like oh man if you know if i do all this then god's going to give me a better house and a better car and blah blah there's nothing wrong with those blessings if that's what he gives you but that's not what this christian thing's about I can guarantee you by the end of history, there's going to be more people who are broke Christians than there were wealthy Christians. I mean, the majority of the world is broke in that sense. You know what I mean? Like most, I read some t t statistic that said something crazy, like 98% of people born in this world since the beginning of man till now are born in an obscure place in poverty. And most of them will never leave that place and they'll stay at that level, whatever class they were born into, you know, and that's just been the history of mankind. You know, if you're lucky enough to be born as the Prince of England, awesome, dude. Good for you. That'd be, that would be cool. Um, but yeah, it's a spiritual thing, guys. It, it's in here. <clears throat> it's deep in here. It's and, and Jesus says, I knock on the door. You know, I knock on the door of your heart. It's up to us to open it and say, Jesus, come in. I need you. And some of you might be convicted. Some of you might be feeling your heartstrings being pulled because that's what I love about the difference between Jesus and the devil. Jesus is a gentleman. He knocks and says, hey, can I come in? And you're like, I don't know, like I, my house is a mess. This is a parable, all the sin back here in my house. I don't know if I can let you in Jesus. 
and he's not going to bust the door down and force you. He wants you to say, yeah, Jesus, come in. I want to sit down and eat with you. The devil and sin, trust me, I know this personally. The devil and sin have no regard for boundaries. The devil will kick your door down if you let him into your life. Take all your stuff. Um, when you're saying mercy, please stop. The devil doesn't care, dude. He's going to have his way with you and then leave you high and dry. The Lord and the devil are, needless to say, complete opposites, you know? Dude, I'm getting my mouth's getting dry, dude. I think that's it. Um, enough of me. Dang, guys. Any thoughts from those of you viewing? Um, any prayer requests? Any thoughts on the scriptures we read? Any questions, dude, before we wrap it up? I'm going to pray us out, you know, but if there's any comments, scriptures, like I said, prayer requests, anything, let, let's talk. Let's talk about it. Um, I'm just excited and humbled that I could do this. Like I said, guys, I've said this before. I'll say it again. I never in a million years thought that I would be like streaming gaming being open about my faith doing a bible study on twitch like i never in a million years thought i'd do this you know but like i said i feel like the um the field or the harvest field in this space i hate that word but in this online gaming space there are a lot of lost young broken men and some of us might have been that man and i've been that man at times where I think I can escape into a game and spend hours zoned out, you know, grinding and doing a game or whatever. And it's going to like solve my problems. And that was just me chasing, just chasing, 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 and only to be left like empty, you know, at the end. And I think there's a lot of young men who are addicted to games. They're broken. You know what I mean? They don't know how to just go out into the world and like, tell a pretty girl hi and have a normal conversation with them they're just like trapped being attacked being stuck in their home inside on on the internet all day whatever and there's people that need to hear about the lord you know in this space in this community all right guys if you you've got nothing i'm gonna pray us out um i'm trying to think I mean, you can always leave comments on my YouTube, obviously, if you ever want prayer about anything. And then I think you can, like, DM me through Twitch, right? You can send me messages on Twitch. I'm, dude, what do I know? I'm 42. I don't know. But what all I'm getting at is, you know, I'd love to ever pray for someone who needs prayer, whatever, um, and, and, and include you in my prayers when I, when I do pray. And, and I would ask the same of you guys. I really pray, guys, that you would just pray God's will for my life and, and use me however he wants to use me and me be obedient to that. All right. Father, thank you for this time, Lord. An hour and 15 minutes of, of testimony of, of where I'm at kind of as a content creator and and uh, reading directly from the Word of God, from the Bible, um, viewers commenting throughout and and in giving me encouragement um and in, in, le in leading a virtual online bible study essentially lord thank you for this moment this time um we thank you god for our, our shelter our clothes our food we thank you for the people in our lives that love us and we love them god and i just want to lift up all my viewers lord and i've been praying this a lot and i'll keep praying it father but i pray that you give them your holy spirit reveal reveal yourself to them in their lives whatever their calling is whatever their gifts are whatever their talents are they would start using them for you god i pray that they would be encouraged they would be inspired um they would fight off a little bit more of the sin in their life that's plaguing them they would do something at church or in a bible study like to replace that lord and that they would just fight consistently whatever it is father god none of us are perfect and none of us will ever be perfect but we can get up every morning striving after you jesus and your perfect example and if that comes with pain and trials well 
so be it, Father. The Bible says you're going to suffer in this life. Do you want to suffer for good or do you want to suffer for evil? Um, so I pray that you would be there for my viewers, God. Bless them, guide them, um, protect them, protect them and their families, Lord God. Um, again, I pray that your Holy Spirit would be poured out over all of them, Lord. Again, thank you for this time. Thank you for this night. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.